Hello. How are you tonight? Very well. That's awesome. So I'm going to be talking about um, transhumanism, and I actually didn't uh, quite pan out the way that I thought it was going to be, how I was going to give a, kind of a full detailed explanation as to what um, kind of transhumanism is as far as a theory. Um, instead, it's kind of more of my uh, outlook on where humanity's been and where we're going to go. So, humanity in itself, or humanism, is just the, basically the uh, the view or the 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 uh, uh, look on, or the, I guess, the, the philosophy behind the kind of you know, we, we are humans, we are aware of ourselves, we are part of a you know humanity, and so to be able to get to that point, we would have had to start you know existing. So. Whether or not you are, you know, believe in creation or evolution, we always had to start somewhere we existed. And uh, from that point, we had to become aware that we exist. We had to become aware that uh, not only we exist, but what we mean in this world, and um, what other people and what other things in the world mean to us. And then from that point, once we actually establish the meaning, then we we're able to move into becoming resourceful, to be able to make tools that would enable us to survive, to be able to um, you know, make inventions that would allow us to hunt and build ourselves, and um, that evolved into becoming a kind of a, a collaborative effort because people were able to see um, just how powerful it was to be able to work together to make these uh, anything, um, uh, you know, to happen, like whether it be hunting, whether it be uh, gathering, or um, even just uh, kind of. Um, hanging out is always much better if you were to do it with uh, other people. Um, and then at that point, once we were able to establish with a community to be able to get beyond all of our amenities and provide for ourselves, um, we then started expanding. We've gotten to the point now where we've pretty much enveloped the entire globe, um, which is a good thing and a bad thing um, because it's enabled us to become aware of so much more than we ever would have thought possible back a couple thousand years ago. But then at the same time, it's also um, kind of led to many forms of corruption and uh, evil deeds that, that have happened in the world that, and that are still happening in the world that many people here speak out on on a regular basis. Um, and so in kind of not quite a, it's not a, an evolutionary step because of the corruption, but it's kind of a parallel um, item was the actual industrialization of uh, all these things of, you know, just like surviving and being able to create textiles, like the Industrial Revolution is, is like the excellent kind of pivot point of when we moved from relying on uh, spending all of our time, time taking care of um, only the things that you know, allowed us to survive, and then we actually, this allowed us free time, and time to start becoming introspective, and time to be able to start focusing on you know, what else is in the world like. A lot, lot more time to, I guess, uh, just kind of experiment. Um, but that industrialization has now led to stagnation in many ways, meaning that we waste resources. We um, are extremely destructive um, to the earth that we live in. And uh, we have waste that is just littered all over the globe and now all over space. If you look at like a, a map of the satellites and the debris that we have in orbit, it's pretty much just like a big shield around Earth because there's so much crap up there. Um, and so, but as, but we wouldn't have been able to, without kind of seeing where we came from, um, we wouldn't have kind of, you know, driven us to the other side of the spectrum and being like, okay, well, what is it that we need to be? And a lot of people here, like uh, a lot of the talks I've heard in the past as part of the Evolver community, have very much focus on consciousness, of being, basically being, becoming more aware, becoming more in touch with everything and seeing the kind of the value and the, and the problems that exist in the world and kind of knowing what we need to do to um, get around those problems. And then possibly at some point in the future, um, we might be able to, um, like after, after becoming like extremely aware, like transhumanism is being able to move from uh, kind of using, using our technology to be able to move into uh, kind of another state of being uh, where in our, like we don't, like a lot of people could call it like, you know, a global consciousness, like already like there's many, actual, well, I'll first go to the kind of the actual um, uh, definition of transhumanism, uh, where it's very much of the same as 
humanism in itself, but uh, it's more uh, focused on using technology to improve our lives, our existence, and to be able to get over barriers that now exist. Like, let's say one of the barriers that I always like to kind of touch on is, is like speech is, in itself, is that if I, I can't communicate what's really on my mind or on my heart through just talking with one of you. It's, there's so many more like infinitely complex things happening inside of my head and my mind, or my head and my heart, that I can't just say with words. And so there are many ways to be able to transcend that, but I believe that there's other ways using, let's say, technology that would actually allow us to get to that next level. Um, and so the, uh, the singularity, if you've heard of Ray Kurzweil, he's all about the singularity and that there's going to be one pivotal point in history where we're going to basically merge with technology, like where we no longer are going to um, be separate, like having a cell phone in our pockets, we're going to be actually um, be partially you know, biomechanical or cybernetic. Um, and that's very much been driven in the last hundred years by science fiction. So many kind of good philosophical um, shows like that, Ghost in the Shell is one of the favorites, to um, some that are a little bit, you know, touch more on the malicious side of uh, um, cyborgs and the integration of technology and uh, humanity or biology is you know, like the world off of Star Trek. Um, but at this point, right now, we're kind of stuck with, uh, with having pieces of technology that enable us to be um, kind of connected at any point in time. So like the internet is a good example of that we've technically already gotten to a point where um, in some ways we are a, like, a part of transhuman existence because you can communicate with somebody on the other side of the world instantaneously and that was never possible before. Like the fact that um, you're able to basically use a touch screen itself to like move a robot that itself would be able to um, create another robot that would be able to you know, clean your house is kind of a, it's kind of a big deal. And like, like telepresence itself is another example of things or of where we're getting to the point um, that uh, technology is enabling us to do far more things than we ever would have thought possible. We're getting closer and closer to uh, being kind of on the same page or on the like requiring technology to exist, I guess, in some, uh, some forms. So, and then biodynamic technology is another example of uh, um, kind of that uh, like integration of where everybody might have nanobots in the body at one point that would be able to identify a disease within, like, you know, or kill a cancer cell within the seconds of it becoming a cancer cell. Um, and so, now this is kind of an interesting, uh, I threw this in here because um, the, you know, the, the, the view on uh, kind of anon the anonymous, uh, the popularity of anon anonymous among uh, young people, or not, not even young people, but a lot of people, is uh, interesting because uh, they exist in a world where like they are a part of a collective, where they're part of, they're no longer um, just kind of individuals that are able, they identify as themselves, they identify as being, you know, one, as, or as a legion, I guess, or as, like, they don't, they give up their sense of self um, to be able to be part of something bigger. And in a lot of ways, that um, is kind of what the kind of the final um, kind of hive mind mentality that a lot of people believe you know, transhumanism will move into. And so it's um, a, lot of, a lot of people see uh, kind of technology as itself as just being uh, not pure evil, but having the capacity to do a lot of evil. Um, and so, and that's again, kind of was touched on with um, science fiction, is that you actually have any, anything that's a progression in technology will one day wipe the Senate. Um, so that's, that's just kind of a, you know, that's just been the conditioning thing that we, we've gotten as, as watching too much TV, but at the same time, the integration of humans and technology are getting us to the point where we can, um, you know, extend people's lives, um, like, decades beyond what we would have originally what we know what to do in the medieval ages, you're only able to live for about 25, 30 years, and then you would have died of some disease or of uh, you know just, just horrible living conditions. Where at this point, due to the fact that we actually have all this technology that we're integrating into our lives, we have that more, much more rich life that we can concentrate on, kind of, I guess, higher purposes. So there's always a different perspective on you know whether or not the technology and the integration of humans and you know adopting technology whether it's a good thing or a bad thing in my mind it 
it should be, I, I see it as being a good thing, um, partially because like as long as as long as we're focusing on the positive growth, as long as we're um, not worrying, like not focusing on trying to use it for selfish means, it can be something that can bring us to levels of you know consciousness that would have never been possible um, just by ourselves without technology. Um, like even like let's say binaural beats, if you're meditating and you're able to use binaural beats, that would have never been possible without kind of those advancements in technology. Um, and so. Kind of, you know, to wrap things up a little bit is uh, I my my sense on uh, kind of all all of this is that uh, I guess I'm what's called a, an extropian. So um, it basically I, I see the positive side of all of these different uh, kind of advancements in technology, and that can actually enable us to be uh, more than we could ever ever have been without that tech. But um, I also still see the potential of it being evil, and so I work as hard as I can to like, with the stuff that I do in Proto Space. I am always uh, kind of you know, encouraging people to collaborate, to work in, in a community, not by themselves, and to give it back. And the open source kind of you know perspective of just being a part of um, just just it's like a giving community on a technical scale. It's it's really neat. Um, but uh, then. Uh, kind of one thing that a lot of people, you know, that are dabbling in transhumanism is uh, kind of, you know, using technology to give yourself additional senses. And so an easy one is uh, EMF uh, or like just magnetism is you can actually put, like some people, they get um, uh, kind of surgical insertions of magnets into their fingertips and they're able to interact with uh, electrical objects um, by being able to sense the magnetic fields around them. Um, but what you can actually do as an alternative is just take some, uh, like the new magnets, try to get around ones, and use some uh, nail polish or something like that and just paint it over your fingernail. And then you're able to get the same effect. It's really neat. Um, so that's something that, uh, kind of, as it's just a small example of the, the more that we um, would be able to embrace technology, the more that we can actually interact with this amazing world around us. Like, say light for an example, we only see like one one billionth of possible different iterations of, of light. Um, if, if, and now that technology is enabling us to get to that next point, we're able to see galaxies and um, um, you know, like the far reaches of the universe that would have never been possible if we would have just been looking at the night sky ourselves. So um, yeah, I guess I just basically wanted to kind of share kind of my interest in technology and that the fact that um, it's, uh, I know a lot of people are very averse to kind of, uh, I guess, accepting it wholeheartedly. Um, but uh, kind of my, just, I just wanted to you know, share that, uh, you know, the acceptance of technology as long as you do it um, with, the, with the right motivation or the right uh, kind of morals and values, then uh, it, can be, it can be one of the greatest things that has ever happened.